Welcome back to the gutter, the grindhouse gutter. I'm Josh. I'm joined here with Donnie. Yo. And the Professor Smoke. Up. And we are from the All American Spook Show. And every Monday at 6 p.m. East, we put out new podcast episodes. But we also, every week here, have something going on here on the YouTube channel. And it's that time again for Grindhouse Gutter where we we let the professor choose something uh, that kind of would have played back in the old Grindhouse days, the the drive-ins, the B-movies, you know, just uh, that type of fare. So uh, it's October, so I, I think the, the title that you picked this month is quite appropriate. Yeah, we, uh, we're we going to go with uh, Monsters Crash the Pajama Party from 1965. Uh, this is the DVD that Something Weird put out for it. And uh, it's uh, definitely more along the lines of the drive-in market than the uh, grindhouse for this one. But like you said, we kind of combine. We don't have anything separate for the drive-in. We'd have that would mean we'd have to add a whole other show, and then that'd be a whole other thing. So <laughs> we don't we combine. We, we've got enough. Things. We've got enough shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to make this a little bit, you know, wider variety, we include dr- drive-in type movies too, which could be stuff going back to the 30s, 40s, you know, that type. Even though they might not have been, I forget. We'll do a little spotlight on Grindhouse. I'm mean, Grindhouse on Drive-ins, maybe at some point too. I forget the exact year, but it was sometime I believe in the 40s uh, when Drive-ins first started up. And for Grindhouses, even though they didn't call them Grindhouses back then, some stuff going on on like 42nd Street, those old theaters had been uh, had been run down that were used for like Off Broadway and stuff like that had gone into disrepair and then they had been bought back up and uh, reopened as Grindhouses basically in the I guess in the 50s or so uh and then so yeah so there's a little history on, behind it so i don't know that this movie necessarily would have played in grindhouses because definitely more apt for the drive-ins as uh we'll get it into here and you'll see why so uh, but yeah monsters crash the pajama party from 1965 and it's what was called what a midnight ghost show or, or other people call them spook shows things that were primarily put on i mean some like i said some of the stuff might have went on in the grindhouses but definitely went on the drive-ins where it's uh, gimmicky type things that were interactive with the audience, where somebody dressed in a costume might would uh, run around the uh, you know drive-in parking lots and stuff and scaring patrons and whatnot. So, uh, but yeah, we'll get into the specifics of this movie in just a second. But uh, had y'all ever checked this out before? Before this? No, I I had never seen this before. Uh, you know, finding a copy of it for this. Uh, Donnie, you said you did not watch it for this, right? No, no chance to. Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh, absolutely <clears throat> not. <clears throat> no, I just didn't get a chance to. Yeah. Yeah, it, this is something, it, it wouldn't have been on, you know, to my knowledge, I don't believe it was ever. I mean, there would have been no real reason for it to hit VHS back in the day because it's very much, you know, interactive for a, for a grindhouse audience. Now, something weird, you know, when they started putting out their stuff, anything related to driving the grindhouses, they would release. And that was the first time I saw it was on when I purchased this DVD. The premise of this type of thing though really reminded me of that movie that we watched a little while back popcorn from 1991 yeah. at least that, as far as like the gimmicky aspect oh, yeah. of theater going right yeah that movie was was pretty much directly based on william castle we've talked about him before on the show although i don't think we've done any william castle movies yet outside <laughs> did we do the house on haunted hill the original no, no yeah. we haven't done any yeah, we haven't done any William Castle movies yet, but he was kind of the one of the kings of B movie gimmicky type things when it came to movies and you know putting things in. Yeah, you know, stuff you saw in popcorn was uh some of that was directly related to him, like putting buzzers underneath certain seats so that it would like yeah, you know, not only <laughs> would it give you a a jump scare in the movie, but a jump scare plus a buzz or shock or what. I don't think it was a real shock; it's more like a buzz, you know. Uh, things like that. So uh, yeah, this movie kind of falls into that category of. Pretty much things lost to history, unfortunately. Uh, I me mean, personally, I would love to see some of these drive-ins that are still open do something like this around October season. Uh, something similar to this would be awesome, I think. I, I think other people might enjoy that, too. But to my knowledge, at least in this area that we're in, uh, there's no drive-ins that I know of that do that. Now, this is this probably would have been something that would have played, I, I don't know, but I would imagine would have played between like two features, right? Because it's not full length. It's only about 30 minutes. So I would imagine yes. it would be like a gimmicky kind of thing that maybe played between two movies. More than likely, yeah, it would probably link to a double feature, a drive-in double feature type thing. And, uh, you know, because there's a point in this near the near the end, not the very end, but getting closer to the end of this short, this 30-minute film, where uh, the screen goes to like, 
the sky, like clouds and lightning and stuff. And that's at a point where it would be interaction with the, like I was talking about within the point in the movie, it's uh, the monsters and the so-called crash in the pajama party, which the title is basically all this is right. It's a pajama party inside this house. It's supposedly a haunted house. And uh, with teenagers that are more like 20 somethings, you know, <laughs> actors playing teenagers and uh, these monsters, very rudimentary monsters, they're very low budget film. But it was kind of, I mean, it's kind of probably helpful for the, for them to just be these low budget kind of suits because what would happen is the people at the drive-in would have these suits. So it was an ape, mon the mon one monster was a man in an ape suit. Another was what, a wolf man with a really bad wolf man mask yeah. and just black. And then uh, a hunchback, I believe. Was that all of them? I think so. No. Yeah. And, and they kind of showed up towards the end, like you said, when they did the, the part with the lights flashing, like there's a storm or something. And that's, that's when they would have went out in the crowd and grabbed somebody and kind of walk back with them right up on the stage. It, it would have been somebody who was in on the gag, so to speak. It would have been another actor in the audience that they went out and, or in the somebody sitting in a car or whatever the case may be. It was somebody that would have been in on the show or whatever. They go out and grab this girl and take her wherever behind the, I don't know if it's up on a stage or be behind the movie screen, the driving screen or whatever. And then it looks like them, they go into the screen and have the actress in the movie. Yeah. Cause the, uh, the monsters in the movie would then be, they'd already taken, you know, kidnapped the teenage girls that were part of the movie, but they needed, <clears throat> a, you know, they needed somebody else. So that was a gimmick. Then they would go all They kind of walk into the camera, so to speak off camera. And then camera goes up to the sky. And like, like I said, like thunder clouds and lightning and all that stuff. And at this point, you hear screams on the soundtrack. So at this point, there would have been people dressed as an ape or dressed as a hunchback or dressed as a wolfman running through the parking lot in the uh, drive-in, scaring the patrons until they would come across the girl they needed. In other words, the actress that was in on it too. And, you know, I guess pick her up over the shoulder or whatever and run behind the screen with her or up on stage and behind the screen or whatever the case may be. And then you see the, I think it was the ape, right? When it comes walking back, frame on the camera within the film with a with this person from the audience so to speak <laughs> and then uh then the the end of the movie conclusion is just basically them what uh uh kind of running around or whatever and zapping them with the uh, with whatever that ray was supposed to be right yeah right Look, it's, it's of... to, to me like this is total gimmick like there is no real value in watching something like this i mean other than the novelty of it and um what's the the word i'm looking for the nostalgia kind of thing nostalgia. watching something yes. like yeah exactly somebody somebody just your your average normal person watching a horror movie or whatever who's not like necessarily a horror fan or into the horror nostalgia or whatever would, would would yeah just toss this aside and like this is there's nothing why why even bother and but yeah it, it is mainly for the gimmick it, it would be you don't get what you're going to get out of this if you were, unless you were in the drive-in back then when it was playing and you had that interaction going on, that's the, you know, the ultimate point. And that's why, like I said, I wish that somebody would do something like this, even take these old ones and do the same gimmick or whatever today. But uh, watching it now, it's sort of a, like you said, sort of a nostalgia thing. And even though it was a time when I wasn't, I didn't go to drive-ins. I knew it was going on. I'd see stuff on TV or whatever. But I mean, I was too young to to experience this is i mean this came out particularly this one came out before i was ever even born so so it's sort of a one of those things of like a nostalgia for you know that nostalgia for things that were there before you even existed maybe or something you know when it comes to some of these horror movies and drive-in stuff and whatnot but uh it has a charm i guess of it's not just watching it for that aspect as a historical nostalgic artifact of uh of the horror genre yeah. but yeah it has Value <laughs> the acting is terrible it's super corny you know so like for just pure entertainment value there's not much there but i could see where this would be cool in that setting you know so for that nostalgia alone i can appreciate it for what it was but yeah if you're just sitting out to watch this thing as a film for 30 minutes no <laughs> no no. You, you, well, if you already are familiar somewhat with something weird video, then you're probably going to get some enjoyment out of this. And if you like something weird, if you don't know anything about that or don't care to know anything about sort of this, uh, you know, low budget B movie driving type stuff, then it's, yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to really interest you at all. That being said though, this particular disc, I don't know if it's out of print or what's going on with it or if it's easy to get, but it is a sort of a favorite of mine at Halloween. Uh, like if you ever go, if you go to Halloween parties or whatever, you can just stick this on in the background and have it going. And it's a whole bunch of, not just the monsters, pajama party, but 
there's like three hours of spook show ghost house or you know midnight ghost show type trailer things on this and they you just put it on in the background and let it go and i that's what i usually do around halloween time is uh so it's it's worth that just for the uh just for those things on here and it is this kind of thing that inspired the name of our our podcast the all-american spook show it was this type of thing that we kind of drew that name from so there's that slight connection right a little bit there but well, like on the cover of this thing it says uh over three hours of spook show madness. Well, we've got over, I don't know how many hours of spook oh, show madness. On. <laughs> One of these days we had to try to do some kind of tally of how many. Uh, well, yeah, oh, we'll uh, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll figure it out. One of these days. But it, just know this, it's a lot. And, you know, this is the month where we're celebrating our fifth anniversary. So it's literally yeah. five years worth of content here on YouTube and uh, our podcast and everything. So it's Jeez. hundreds easily if not yeah. approaching a thousand hours of content we've probably <clears throat> it's got to be yeah that's pretty close yeah, yeah what we do here on the grindhouse gutter though since uh smoke you know puts these up is we let him do two ratings we do the grindhouse gutter rating where it's a zero through ten scale of kind of where this lands as far as like all the elements of a of, of a good grindhouse flick or experience right and then you do the uh the zero through five star rating quote unquote where it falls into different categories of exploitation, martial arts, kung fu, action, and horror. So this would fall more in the horror, right, than it would exploitation for sure. But there are those kind of elements there, but you know. So I guess based on that, what, what's your grindhouse gutter rating? What's your uh, what's your uh, uh, cleaver rating? Yeah, the grindhouse gutter rating on it, or in this case, driving <laughs> rating. Or uh, you know, it would be. It's kind of hard, like I said, to, to judge this type of movie because it would have to be in its setting, in its, you know, having that experience with the actors and stuff running in, into the audience and whatnot. So without having that, just viewing it on its own, it's got, you know, it's it's low budget, hokey, campy kind of dialogue and all that stuff. So, I mean, some of that feeds into a grindhouse type rating. Um, I guess I'd give it three outside of that experience now if you were experiencing this like i said if somebody were to put on a show at a drive-in and put this on and have the experience of the actors running out it would it would probably get a four or so at least it, it would be enjoyable just from that aspect of it you know that that experience of it so cleaver rating it's it's an artifact uh poor history so some little bit of charm on it you know charming aspects of it or whatever but like you said it's it's really low budget it's no real storyline per se it's total gimmick made to cash in on the driving thing at the time and they you know, and having the experience of actors running out and the and the crowd and whatnot so without any of that it's you know it's it's just going on an artifact of horror history so to speak so and that's not enough for most people to even watch it once much less watch it a second or third time so uh I guess the cleaver rating I'll go with it based on that. Like I said, not having the drive-in experience with it, just watching it on your on your TV or whatever and on your home. Uh, probably echo almost the uh, that rating. I give it. Uh, I'll go with just I'll, I'll be generous and give it a two cleavers because uh, again it is it has a little bit of charm, but you have to like really be into horror nostalgia, spook show nostalgia drive-in nostalgia, whatever, to get enjoyment out of it. Because uh, other than that, it's just going to be boring to you completely. So. Yeah, it's so not go and you're going to watch more than once, like you said. One viewing, you know, just for the historical appreciation of it, and that's that's probably it. You know, or if, like you said, just play it in the background during during October or something, just to have something kind of going. So there's that. Uh, two is very two, – two is me kind of taking into, as, into, you know, aspect of it being in a theater, in a grindhouse, and kind of seeing it. Because like I said, that would that would boost the rating if that were the case. But uh, so uh, yeah, it's a little bit generous, but two it is, I guess. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, uh, what what's next for the Grindhouse Gutter next month? Yeah, we're this will be uh, coming in at the end of after we've already done the Exorcist and the new Exorcist that's in theaters. This will sort of ride the coattails of that. It's going to be Abby. So it'll be our first black exploitation movie, and it's also a horror movie. And it's also an exorcism ripoff. So <laughs> so it's got three things, three of those things going to for it. And for me personally, I haven't seen it in a long time since probably mid-80s or late 80s or so. 
and I've seen it recently, and trust me, it's batshit crazy. Go check this movie out. You don't want to miss this. I think it's going to be a fun time to talk about that one. So that's it for this month. So for Will, who couldn't be with us, Donnie, Professor Smoke, I'm Josh. We're from the All-American Spook Show, and we'll talk to you next month for Abby. <laughs>